Well, my father was George Martin, the Beatles producer, and he sort of dissuaded me from going to music. I think he wanted me to get a proper job. But sadly, he became deaf when I was a teenager. So I became his ears and used to follow him in the studios and do sessions with him. So I suppose I've been in and out of studios since the day I was born, but really working since I was about 15. And sort of learned from him, learned the tools of the trade from him, and uh, here I am now at Abbey Road. What makes a good producer varies depending on the type of producer. There are some producers who are engineers that come from an engineering background, and they're sort of the more modern-day producer, if you like. And then producers like my father, who wouldn't really be more of an artist producer, an orchestrator. Paul McCartney always says the key is to have a good bedside manner with the artist. And that means you, I mean, you're stuck in a room with someone for you know, 16, 17 hours, and you have to get on with them. And also you have to have ideas, be constructive, and also pinpoint when the good ideas are happening. I think Glyn Johns once said that when the hairs on your arm stand up, you should probably stop recording and move on to something else. I remember working at Rack Studios. The first album I ever produced was at Rack Studios, and I would have been about 23, 24. And it was a great band called Monorail, and I really did a very bad job with their album. And a friend of mine called Chris Sheldon, who was making, recording Shed 7, I think, in the Next Door Studios, his, his, it sounded really good. And we became friends. And he said to me, and I always remember it, he said, you know, once you learn how to make things sound good, it gets kind of boring. And that sounds like an arrogant thing to say, but I get what he means. And so you get to that stage where I know that you may not like a record that I put out, but it'll sound okay. You know, that, that's, you know, like there's lots of us around. So then you get to the stage where how do we break the rules? How do we change stuff? How do we push things? How do we, you know, how, why, why should we be sitting still or standing still? Being a producer is a multifaceted, multifaceted thing and just varies. Um, all in all, you have to be responsible at the end of the record. You have to make good records. When I was in the Love Project, I put a Pro Control in a room here because I was working on Pro Tools and I like having a desk. And so it made sense. And also, I actually quite liked having a joystick so I was doing lots of surround stuff. And I sort of, I've sort of stuck with that pattern. I like the fact that I can come in and open a session and it all just comes up and I don't have to do anything. I'm essentially a very lazy person. I like the fact that I can get some poor engineer to work on a project and I completely destroy all of his work in one simple go by just pushing faders up and down. I like, you know, because it's funny if it appeals to the, uh, the older set as well as the, as the younger set. With the S6, for instance, I... I've started now using, which I never did before, using the knobs for EQs. I know it's a stupid thing to say, but I think a lot of us never did. We liked the idea, but we never, we never did, you know, because you're so used to using a mouse. It's, it's good to take your, take, your, take your face away from a screen for a little bit as well. And it's good to be able to, for example, I mean, just the fact that you can, I can push my screens to one side and they don't get in the way of the speakers. Because that does make a difference to your mix. I mean, you know, we, we mix with, with, with televisions in front of us. You know, it's going to be, it's going to affect the sound in some way. And, you know, now you can, you can get rid of all of that. You know, I grew up pushing faders up and down. I grew up turning knobs. Now with the S6, you can, you know, we're, we're at the stage where it operates like a mixing desk. A lot of the older music that I work on, um, whether it's the ones, eight days a week, hard days, night, you know, certainly the love show. We really couldn't have done the same. We, there's no way we could have done it without Pro Tools. There's no way we could have done it without, without, without manipulating audio in some way.